Welcome to the car guys and this week one that you've been asking for for what seems like years. We are finally getting around to doing an in-depth review of this beautiful 458 Italia. Jason, this is of course my beloved Ferrari 458 Italia in Bianco Fuji and I have owned this car since March 2015. It's one of my favourites, I absolutely love this car, it's such an amazing thing. I love this car so much I've owned it for five years and bear in mind that the average ownership of a new Ferrari is one year and I've done 16,000 miles in it which is ridiculous for a Ferrari but I couldn't help myself because it is such a usable everyday car. You definitely can daily this. This is a daily Ferrari without any shadow of a doubt. It's so nice to drive. So this week what we're going to do is take you in depth on the 458 Italia, what it's like to own, the costs of ownership, the experiences, what it's like to drive, all the little quirky facets of this car. We're really going to have a lot of fun today. I'm so looking forward to it. I love driving this car. I've driven it a lot. Today is a good day at the car guys. <laughs> it really is. And do you remember as well actually Jason, this was one of the cars that we used as a pilot for the car guys. I'll show you a little bit of uh, car guys behind the scenes magic right now. <laughs> Before we get started, let's do a quick wristwatch check. This week I have on my Omega Alaska project, which is uh, one of my very special Speedmasters. Very nice it is too. And I am wearing the lovely Bukhara, Tudor Heritage Bukhara Bronze with the uh, blue, blue, NATO. blue NATO. Lovely. Well, first thing to say is it's five years old, but it is still beautiful. Look and at it. It really is stunning. Now, when these were first launched at the Frankfurt Motor Show back in 2009, that rear quarter I wasn't a great fan of because it's just such a large slab of colour. But actually, with the dark roof, that kind of disappears a little bit, so it's nice. Now, we've had two iterations of V8 Ferrari since this was launched. Yeah. And I have to say, she's still got it, right? Definitely. I mean, the, the F8 Tributo is a, is a nice car. It's the front end's much nicer. It might be more aggressive. Yeah. But just look how beautiful this is it's so much more swoopy and elegant and timeless i think this is the most beautiful modern ferrari ever made oh god really that's yeah. quite a yeah I, I have to agree with you there because what went before it 430 <laughs> yeah. 360 oh, oh god no. 355 beautiful, oh, wait, beautiful, no. beautiful, 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 careful, careful. The 458 Italia was launched in 2009 at the Frankfurt Motor Show. It ran until 2015, so a good six year run. This car here is a March 2015 car. The Coupe launched in 2009, the Spider came in 2011, the Speciale came in 2013, and the Speciale Aperta came in 2014. Right, so obviously to normal everyday people this is metallic white but what is it actually called so this is a triple layer white pearlescent paint that it's called bianco fuji and it's not as bright as the sort of brilliant white that ferrari does uh, it's just slightly sort of more creamy almost but with that sort of pearlescent thing in this sun it looks incredible and actually it's very unusual to see white ferraris i never thought i'd have a white ferrari but it just works it does work really well and actually when this car was sitting in the showroom I tagged it as being yours about two months before you bought it because you just looked at it I could see the love little love flashings in your eyes and you went oh that's got to be my car that is very true it was in the showroom for a while and then Ferrari said hey we <laughs> we are going to stop making 458s and of course as soon as they said that I needed to have one because I wanted to make sure you know I didn't want to lose out one of the interesting things about this Ferrari, as it's one of the more modern versions, is there a lot of wind tunnel work done on this particular car. And what they discovered was by putting in these winglets at the front, they're actually deformable. So the faster you go, they move out of the way and create a different aerodynamic profile for the car. Makes it very sticky at high speeds, which makes it such a good 
high-speed cruiser. So here we are, Jason. This is the beating heart of this Ferrari, a 4.5 litre V8, naturally aspirated. Look how beautiful it is. It is truly a thing of magnificence. Very easy to work on. There's a lot of space in here. Oh, hang on, whoa, whoa, stop. I'm gonna, just going to pull you up there. Very easy to work on. Of course it is. You ain't changed nothing on this car, never, have you? No problem. Just pop it up on the ramp, do a little bit of tinkering, yeah? No problem. There you go. I'll get yeah, the yeah. oil. Look, yeah, easy. Yeah. Where's the dipstick, sunshine? There, uh, yeah, there, 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 there. There. Someone over there. Probably doesn't have a dipstick. <laughs> it's so modern, there's no dipstick. Ever since the 360 Moderna, you've got a glass panel over the engine, so you can actually see the engine, and you can also see it through the glass here from the cabin. 360, 430, carried on through the 458 into the 488, and of course now the F8 Tributo. The thing that sets the 458 apart from the more modern versions is that this car is a naturally aspirated V8, which means no turbochargers, there's a direct connection between you and it. This car is running 562 brake horsepower. All that horsepower and torque propels this car to 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour in 3.4 seconds onto a top speed of 202 miles an hour. Surprisingly, the boot space of a 458 Italia is spacious. In order to open the boot, you've got to press quite a horrible button inside the cabin. So obviously, being a Ferrari boot, it's absolutely pristine because you never put anything in them. Although it does have a very faint width of Chinese takeaway. So it's not all sunshine, roses and champagne when owning a Ferrari. They are still Italian and what that means is that sometimes there are some issues with them even at five years old that you probably wouldn't expect to see on say a modern Toyota Yaris. Damien, tell us all about it. One of the problems that 458 Italias suffer from, in fact many Ferraris actually, surprisingly modern ones, is corrosion. This car actually suffered from corrosion on all four wheel arches. It's just been sorted out by Ferrari and uh, there is a four-year anti-corrosion warranty on 458s. Sadly, I discovered it just a few months too late. So there is one thing to look out for if you're buying a 458 is check all the wheel arches for corrosion because even though it's only five years old, they can corrode a lot earlier than you would think. Oh, Jesus, that's a bit scotchio. Minere conta interior, scotchio. Minere conteria exterior, scotchio. Monte Blanco, scotchio. Costa, scotchio. Oh no, crumbles nimbas. <gasps> the ergonomics of the cockpit in the 458 were partly developed with the help of Michael Schumacher. You know him, that famous Formula One driver. His contribution mainly seems to have been to have put all the controls on the steering wheel so that you never really have to take your hand off the wheel, which in theory is a good idea when you're on a racetrack, but when you're driving around in town or on quick A roads, it's not so clever. Let me take you through the steering wheel. It's quite a small thick affair which feels very positive in the hand. You've got these hidden horn buttons up where your thumb position should be. And let me tell you, whenever you need to use the horn, your mind automatically goes to press the Ferrari emblem in the middle of the steering wheel, not press it with your thumbs as you're supposed to. It's not very intuitive. Then we've got this magnificent red engine start button, which is a pleasure to use. Note on the 458s, you only use it to start the engine, not to stop it. That's still by pulling the key out. You've then got a button just above it to activate the bumpy road mode. So that helps soften the suspension. Then above that, you have the main beam or flashing headlights button, which again, you will always forget which way round it is. On the other side, you've then got the windscreen washer controls and you also have the super cool Manatino, which was developed and brought on from the 430. And that's where you select the various driving modes of the car and it actually changes the characteristics of the car quite drastically. Oh yeah. That's right, it's the 458 Italia. 458 time. Whoop whoop. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. oh yes, oh yes. That's what you're paying your money for, folks. So first thing to say, really, it's beautiful in here. Mm. 
it's a lovely driving experience. You get in, you immediately feel at home. It's not intimidating like other supercars. It's just easy to get relaxed. The steering wheel's exactly where you want it. Everything's clear. It's all beautiful over there. There's a good amount of space, lots of glass. It's just so perfect as a, as a car, which is why you can daily it. The gearbox, if you left it in automatic, you could just put it around. All right, it's got this annoying habit of wanting to select seventh gear at 25 miles an hour. Yep. But apart from that, it's actually quite an, quite a nice place to be, isn't it? Just yeah. to pop to Tesco's or do whatever you want to do. The air conditioning controls you can see here, and I did check this, viewers, but you, you cannot have that in carbon fibre. The only material that you can have, cheap. Cheap, cheap black plastic. Yeah, exactly. And we've moaned about this a lot before. The carbon fibre, carbon fibre, mm, yeah. leather, carbon fibre, yeah, yeah, yeah. black plastic. Oh. Fault focus. <laughs> I mean, Ferrari, Ferrari, Ferrari. Fiat. <laughs> Every time, right? Every time. Now we're in the sport mode at the moment, which is right. pretty much the mode that you'll drive it most of the time. It gives you a good compromise between comfort and the speed and the urgency. It's just a nice all things to all men type mode. But if you say nudge it up to the race, now immediately it gets firmer, yep. you feel it stiffer, the throttle response is improved, the butterfly valves and the exhaust stay open, and you now can hear that glorious V8 engine to the max, but also responses are instant. Yeah, it definitely is jiggling around a lot more yep. because of the suspension. I'm not sure that that throttle needs to be more responsive, I have to be honest. It is very, very hair trigger, it isn't is it? It is very hair trigger. Yeah. One slight bobble of your foot, you know, and that's it, you're doing 300 miles an hour. You can get quite a lot of sort of jerky progress yeah, because yeah. the throttle is so sensitive that as you make a, a minor, yeah, minor correction will lead into some quite jerky sort of spurts of acceleration. Which then everyone else thinks you're a complete knob. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So ownership experience of a 458 up until now for me has been pretty smooth, I have to say. Remember, you get seven years free servicing, you get three year warranty, you get four year corrosion warranty. And that means that taking a, your Ferrari to service is a painless exercise. Right. It costs less to service this than it does a Ford of the same years because well, because it because, costs nothing because it costs nothing i mean how good is that now obviously shh, there were a few issues with some fires early on so some of them did catch fire as a result of a glue problem in the rear wheel arches but you know it's italian it's fixed in it we don't like to talk about that anymore it's behind us isn't it it's what the tvr community would like to call a niggle <laughs> when your car catches fire and the wheels fall off it's just a niggle <laughs> Teething. Teething problems. <laughs> so let's now demonstrate the 458 Bark. So we're driving in town, just uh, trickling along here, it's all 15 miles an hour. Oh, what's that? So I've just slightly touched the throttle and we've got a big old bark going. It's yeah. still there as well. Oh, there, we there we go. That's quite noisy. It is, isn't it? It's really, yeah. really noticeable and actually not that pleasant. No, it's, it's definitely deep throaty. It, this, this, I think, to me, is one of the things I don't like about it. It feels a bit synthetic. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And I know what people say when they say that the 458's noise is not really a true Ferrari, it is too manufactured. I think that's, that that's is what they mean. That's where it comes from. Yeah. You've got the bumpy road mode, basically softens it up, which makes the ride more tolerable on British roads. Little known fact though, this is a contribution by Mr. Michael Schumacher, if you have race mode, a lot of people don't realise you can then also then press the bumpy road mode and have race but soft. And that is a crucial thing to have. And now what we can do is turn race on, suspension on, and now we've got the best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Bad boy, you nail the throttle, you're instantly on it. Let's do it. So Let's here have we it. go. Third, we're yeah. at three and a half thousand. Bang! Instant, oh. instant, instant, instant. <laughs> Slams you back in your seat. Neck muscles screaming. You're just looking in the rear view mirror, make sure that there's no one following you too closely. And you can see the engine rocking as you go on and off the throttle. It's absolutely amazing. 
think we should have some beans. Oh, I think we should have some beans. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Looks a little deep. Oh. Little bit of traction issue there, I noticed. Yeah, exactly. Second gear, it's a bone dry day, but we still a little bit of a shimmy yeah, in the back there. Cool. Also, you get a bit of theatre in a 458, which you can turn off, but honestly, why would you? No one you would. get the change-up lights in the steering wheel. Yep. Just fabulous. So as you rev up, the whole thing lights up like a Christmas tree. Now, I know we've mentioned it before, but it's worth mentioning again. You've got two different screens. You've got two different control inputs for each screen, both of which are fairly horrendous, and both of which mean that making even the simplest of changes to different modes is incredibly difficult and very distracting for the driver. If you want to watch our 458 versus 488 video, which we uh, very much encourage you to do, oh, yes, indeed. you will see a whole skit in there on how difficult it is merely to change the radio station in one of these. No, no, no. No. It is ridiculous because you have to, you have combinations of holding buttons, turning buttons, pressing buttons, and everything is visual. It's a terrible system if you don't want to be distracted from driving. And it does mean that if you've got a 458, if you want to change something meaningful, you probably should pull over to do it. The other thing to mention. Oh. Oh, no, no. You know no, what I'm going to say, no, don't you? No, no. You know what I'm going to say. Oh, right, ladies and gentlemen, go and get yourself a cup of tea. A nice rich tea biscuit, biscuit of the week this week. Uh, Damien's about to have a 20 minute rant on indicators, my learned colleague. <laughs> right, the indicators on this thing are a joke, honestly. It's probably the worst thing about a 458 is the indicators. What Michael Schumacher did is he said right I want all the controls on the steering wheel so that you don't have to take your hand off the steering wheel which in theory is a good idea good idea he then included the indicators and instead of having a stalk which works brilliantly oh. down for left up for right Who'd have thought? yeah controversial and a nice clicky sound so you know you've got them he replaced them with two very horrible imprecise buttons no noise for the indicator click and buttons which you cannot tell if you've pressed and a super sensitive steering rack which means that the merest hint of turning of the wheel whilst an indicator is on will cancel it and you cannot therefore tell if you are still indicating. Couple that with the fact that the indicator lights are just behind the steering wheel so you can't actually see them and you have a situation where you are barreling towards a junction you think the indicator's on telling you you're the traffic ahead what you're doing but they're off so you plow straight into another car it's got 400 foot pounds of torque which sounds like a lot but actually it doesn't feel like a particularly torquey motor no and also you don't particularly get a huge payoff for going all the way up to the top of the revs you get the noise but you don't get that extra shove that you tend to get no. in some cars. It's very linear power delivery. Here we are, now we're going to a twisty bit of road. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun and we're gonna show you just what this car is like. Very, very wide car for going around such a narrow lane. I do think that potentially, oh, big van. Oh dear. It's going to get away from you, do you? Well, at these know. kind of speeds. I mean, on a racetrack, obviously, where it changes direction as well. Look at those down changes, though. GT3 I would say the GT3 is more planted uh, this has got a little bit of play in the chassis so it's it's got a lot of grip but you can sense what's going to happen all the time and uh, if you push it yeah it will it will definitely step out I mean I just love the visibility I love how much you can see out of it Like over, down, just 
lovely. Look at that through there. Careful not to not to take off. I think we got a bit of air then. If anything, it's the brakes that don't feel up to the task. So even though they're ceramic, they don't give you as good a feeling as the ceramics in the Porsche. So it's the attractiveness of that naturally aspirated V8, the last one that Ferrari has ever made, helping keep values of 458s high compared to the 488. Yeah. 488 is really starting to plummet, but 458 prices are stable, in some cases going up. So you took me on it. It's my turn to drive. Guess what? Bloody great big lorry. Heart oh, palpitations, doesn't it? It does, it really oh. does. There's nothing really intimidating about this at all. Apart from its width. Apart from the width, <laughs> yeah, as we've just found out. <laughs> so what do we like about this car? I love the way it looks. I love the interior simplicity of it. The noise. The noise is amazing. <laughs> I love the way that it drives, the way it handles. It fills you with confidence. Boot space is incredible, the steering, the lightness, values, depreciation. And then what do we don't like? Don't like this hair trigger throttle, it's driving me bloody insane. Yeah, very sensitive throttle. I don't like the fact that the wheel arches have started corroding four years into ownership. The brakes don't exactly give you massive confidence. They do work, but there is that moment of where you're clenching the cloth underneath your bottom. Exactly. As you go to stamp on them and they don't react. Touching cloth. They're touching cloth, literally. I mean, all round, the 458 is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the greatest Ferraris ever, ever made. Speciale probably just adds the icing on the cake. How do you think this car go, would go down in Essex? Well, it's perfect. It is an Essex car, isn't it? It's white. This is like a stiletto. What would happen if we took this car, say, to South End? South End? What would happen to us? Um, I think we would be licked. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode and the full review of the Ferrari 458 Italia. Really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, ding the notification bell for when we have another episode uploaded. Come and find us on Instagram check out the website. There'll be another Car Guys episode along next week. Mm -hmm.